Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I'm back with the rocket sled and this time I have the Orion 3 space plane, the actual Orion 3 space plane from 2001 Space Odyssey except I have put vertical stabilizers on it and we're using real engines. These are actually the Prometheus vacuum engines that uh, ESA are developing for a potential Ariane upgrade. Uh, but yeah, those are 1,000 kilonewton engines and one of the things I had figured out was that the Orion 3 space plane from 2001 Space Odyssey was actually possible with current technology. You didn't need any sort of nuclear thing or fancy stuff because it was a space plane with 32 passengers possible in there and actually I have the seats arranged somehow. There we are. We have a cabin with seats and uh, uh, as long as you have that kind of cabin and then you also have a carrier plane like this which I have filled with methane and oxygen and we have realistic rocket engines on the back with it uh, it can launch uh, actually normally I would launch it vertically but for passengers it is more convenient to have it horizontal so that it can board normally and that is why we have the rocket sled as I had explained before, the rocket sled enables this to launch horizontally and then eventually get to a more vertical sort of situation, but not perfectly vertical. Actually, this version with the Orion 3 space plane has a lot more trouble pulling up than the version with the Mini Star. And that's possibly because the Mini Star has all moving wings, whereas this does not. Now, I didn't make the Orion 3 space plane wings exactly like in 2001 Space Odyssey, I just have them procedural here just for simplicity's sake but I could make the wings now and maybe I should but for now they're just procedural wings and I've got procedural vertical stabilizers because I decided that probably it wouldn't be able to control y'all without those I have test landed it before this is, has all been tested before it's the rocket sled part that's a little bit iffy uh, if you've seen the previous videos with the rocket sled it is difficult this time we're going to use KOS to launch it. Previously I was controlling it myself, and as far as the timing is concerned, that hasn't exactly made it more consistent. <laughs> uh, the Kerbal physics being what they are, uh, the sort of gap between frames, physics, physics frames, makes it so that it's sort of random, it really. Now, people suggested I use JATO or RATO, the using rocket assisted. We have separatrons right now, as you can see, but we might need something more powerful. I will evaluate that here. And again, the rocket sled is meant to stay on the track. That's why we have retro boosters. And let's see how it goes with the KOS first, and then I'll talk more about it. So the first thing that's weird is that I have to actually decouple it from the docking port in the back like this. Anytime that KOS tries to do that, just that, at the the thing ends up clipping into the track. I don't know why. I don't know why when KOS stages it clips into the track, but it does. This is just one of those weird Kerbal things that's been very frustrating about this. So alright, here we go. The script for launching it on the rocket sled. And let's see if it survives. I've tried various things with this. It, it survives most of the time. So then the engine's light there. And that seems fine. Ooh, then here it pitches down. Eek! Okay, so I don't know why it's pitching down there, but it really ought not to. I had moved the separatrons further back in order to maybe save the body flap. I'm going to undo that. I want them to help the nose to go up. Now ultimately there's going to be a whole thing. I'm going to have a door on the side of the Orion 3 space plane. Actually, currently its hatch is on top because that was the easiest access point given a vertical launch, but uh, we'll have a hatch on the side like a normal airliner and then they can board on the side and get into their seats and we'll actually have a structure here. I'll probably update the textures down there, but there's reasonable tarmac and so so actually if we uh, open hatches right now it's up top there for a docking port so I'll need to have a side door 
and then they can get into their seats, little Kerbals, and then we can launch. If I can get this to be reasonably consistent, which right now it's not safe, obviously. I'm not going to change the script for now, and that's because we don't want to change too many variables, right? So, oh, see, okay, uh, I forgot to change, so see, it clipped in. Whenever it, whenever it does the decoupling, it always clips into the RAM. At least it's consistent like that, but why is it different from when I stage it? I have no idea. Okay, stage. And when I stage it, it's always okay. It never clips into the ramp. Okay, this time it cleared. Actually, it's doing a fairly good job of pulling up. So yeah, I was shifting the little Separatrons that made it happen. We lost one body flap though. So I had shifted the Separatrons back in order to save the body flaps and ended up killing the plane. So anyway, let's let's just make sure that this happens. We can see that the sled stays on the track there. I'm not very excited and I'm happy. Body flap aside. Oh, it, it, it banged against the rear the docking port, but that's fine. It's still there. Let's make sure the Orion space plane actually gets into orbit. This is the first time I've flown the Orion space plane in a long, long time. I think the last time I actually used it was 1.8.1. It's not really getting to the target pitch at all. Eventually the target pitch is going to come down to meet where we are actually at, but... Yeah the sheer aerodynamics of all this make it impossible for it to actually pull up all the way. But as long as it stays above 30 degrees, it's probably okay. Now, because the Orion 3 space plane is was, was sort of designed for the Orion carrier plane before I started using these engines and upgraded them, uh, it's actually a fairly light payload for this, and so there's got to be a lot of fuel left when the Orion 3 space plane decouples, uh, carrier plane decouples. I've made it more robust in order to accommodate the Mini Star and its payload, so that we can increase the payload capacity to low Earth orbit. Whether I can make use of that here and not reserve so much fuel in the carrier plane sort of depends on our landing spot. Oop, well, it just shut off some of the engines. Right now we're trying to land in the Bahamas eventually, and as you can see our track is headed towards the Bahamas. If I try to have it use more of its fuel to help the space plane, then it's going to overshoot the Bahamas potentially. Ooh, that's not as decoupling I was like. Oh, I don't want to see that decoupling, that's not good. Okay, eek. Alright. Huh. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> anyway, so these are possible engines. These are just ones developed uh, by ESA and modest capabilities. 368 second ISP, but they're pretty large nozzle engines. The physical size of this is about the same as a 737, but it's not. It's only carrying 32 people. Uh, the reason being that it has to have that much room for the fuel. So after this, I will try a version with more significant disposable boosters on the carrier plane instead of the separatrons to see if we can save the body flap. But I want to get this into orbit once. And there's orbit, with about 500 meters per second left. Now, if the carrier plane could impart a little bit more to this, that would be great, because in 2001 Space Odyssey, this rendezvoused with a space station, the Space Station 5, which was higher up than this. It had a more complete view of Earth, so it was clearly higher up. I don't think that would be a good idea because of the radiation belts, 
but uh, yeah we would want this to be a little bit higher up at least maybe maybe like beyond the radiation belts but then earth would be looking much smaller than it did in 2001 a space odyssey stanley kubrick was obviously going for good visuals on that rather than actually going with where the space station ought to be placed however gosh darn it the the actual space plane designs were pretty good okay but for now now the thing with uh, adding more substantial boosters is that we don't really need them to have long duration we don't have very good boosters for that purpose the best I could think of really would be on one of the Japanese rockets, I forget which one it was, uh, the Lambda, Lambda 4S has little boosters that don't spend, don't, don't take too long. And I used those for launch escape system before. Those would be nice, but I don't have them in here right now. Mirror separatrons are not enough apparently, and the normal boosters that we have are too long duration and so you're carrying a lot of dry mass for no reason. Well, I'm gonna put the decouplers first and then see. But you know like the AJ-60A well that's great and all but it lasts like a minute and a half so we don't super duper need that. We need more thrust and less time. So, should I do procedurals again? Procedurals are always dangerous because they don't want to configure themselves properly. Let's say... I mean, if it's too long, if these boosters last too long, they're actually hindering the main engines. So, that's not great. And yeah, procedural SRBs are glitchy. Okay, does it look like it out? No, <laughs> it looks like it's glitchy. Maybe it'll be okay. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. Look, it left an extra one. It likes to leave extra copies all over the place. But normally they would have a set of J2 or Rato rockets all in the line, not a single one like this. So something like that. <laughs> but now it's, it's not got its numbers there. So is it really going to do anything? Okay. Nope. 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 Okay, that's not good enough. Maybe more of them? They seem to fire. I don't know if they provided any thrust or not. Let's see. Maybe they didn't. They f had the flames but didn't actually provide any impulse. Not sure. Maybe I should fire them ahead. Firing them at the same time might not be good enough. We're looking at 2,500, well, 2,330 kilonewtons for 11 seconds, which is not bad. That's a lot. But fine, we'll have a bunch of them. <laughs> But let's face it, we're talking about a contraption that they're trying to boost that's very heavy. 1,300 to 1,500 tons. It's not nice having such boosters to do such a... such a job. But I guess we're paying passengers and everything. How else are you going to get 32 people in space? Now, mind you, in 2001 A Space Odyssey, they had the whole cabin empty and it was just the one guy riding inside of it. 
No, it's making duplicates all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna try and get it so that it doesn't come into contact with any other surface, maybe. Their context boxes aren't exactly popping up at all now. So who knows if they're gonna give any thrust. Okay, well, it's just randomly exploding here. Who's responsible? It, it is solid rocket motors. Um, it's those little procedural SRBs, at least as far as I can tell here. Uh, were they clipped in where they weren't supposed to be clipped in? No, we've got got them on either side. There's no particular reason for them to just randomly explode there. Okay, it's more or less stable now. Random, I tell you. But it's, it's moving up and down quite a lot. So yeah, I'll have the SRBs fire when the engines start. Well, they sort of happened, but... Okay, we've got both body flaps. I don't know if that stayed on the track, though. They're lasting a bit too long. Okay, drop. Ah, they hit the wing! Great, the boosters need separatrons. But actually, they didn't kill the wing, though. Oh, I think it did stay on the track. I think it slid back. So I think it's okay. So, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll need to formalize those and get better decouplers for them. Because uh, we've got both body flaps. So that's a positive. All engines. And losing some engines. Sometimes I've lost some engines even with both body flaps still surviving. <laughs> Figure that one out. But, um, yeah. So... Maybe those stronger boosters might be the idea, but uh, having to dump them is not nice. Maybe I could just have them built into the body and just have a bank not of three, but of a larger number that we can just sort of have on the side of it. And then we can just pack the fuel again. I don't know. I mean, of course, you, uh, mostly the SRBs are... Well, the cases are sort of useful. So, the, the cases are pretty expensive. You always need to repack the fuel one way or another. Generally, you have to clean out the fuel. Because uh, there's remnants anyway. So it's tough to, like, reuse SRBs in any way. So I don't know if it's good to keep the cases on the body or not. If I can make them molded to the body, it might might be worthwhile just not to risk dumping them like that. But I could also make a highly customized decoupler vector so that they get ejected just the right way. But that's got to take some testing because, you know, at that point... The wing is probably very vulnerable if we put them right there, and they're probably ne they probably need to be right there. There's no avoiding that. And that's because the center of mass is there. You can tell where the center mass of the Orion carrier plane is because the landing gear will be right behind it. So, all right, we've seen this get to orbit before, but that is the situation, the improvements. I've got KOS, we've got the intended sort of, I mean, the Mini Star is also an intended payload, but we've also got this thing, uh, the Orion 3 space plane, and we have a technical solution for not getting the body flap killed while still keeping the rocket sled on the track. We sort of saw it there. So, yeah, as this continues to make orbit, 
And I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, why is it rolling? Why does it have to? Uh, probably some residual thing going on. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.